Hello and welcome to our next tutorial which is number five of our WPF real world application and when we left the last time we had just finished putting together our uh, main window we gave it a background gave it an icon we talked a little bit about organizing our solution area for containing our audio files and fi images video files we also did a little bit of bringing in adding new items to our or existing items to our uh, solution explorer and to our project uh, we used that background image that we brought in as a uh, uh, as a uh, reference or as a uh, part of our solution in order to create that background and now we're going to start looking at a few of our other items that we have on our list of things to do the main dashboard image for the uh, application I think we can uh, say is pretty much done we may touch on that now that was just the image but we don't have any controls as of yet and one of the uh, things that we do need is we need to have uh, buttons or a way to go between our different types of animals and we're gonna have sections but when we do that there's also a requirement down here is that we have to have the ability to turn off the audio and we want this thing uh, or this control to be cross window so if I go for instance if I'm in the main dashboard window and let's say for a minute I have a button up here because I think this is where I'm going to put my buttons over here but if I have a button over here that says go to amphibians and when I click over to amphibians I'm using my control to listen to audio and text and video and all that what if I want my main control that says turn off audio and I click it in the other window when I come back to this window I still want that to remember my user selection so we're gonna have to be able to pass some information between windows and to do that we're gonna create uh, uh, a new window in this uh, video we're going to uh, uh, make a interactive uh, relationship between our main window here or our primary window uh, dashboard window whatever you want want to call it and we're going to pass some uh, variables and settings between those windows so that we know when we go to one window and we make a change or a user selection of a change it's going to maintain that selection as long as the user continues to uh, operate the application so how are we going to do that the first thing of course that we're going to need to do oh by the way this will probably bring in a little bit more code I think we've been doing a lot of layout and and primary uh, relationships with getting things kind of going uh, along the lines of creating our application but we haven't done any real code in order to make this an interaction between the windows we're gonna have to write some code and we're gonna have to pass some variables so for those of you that have been waiting to get some code going you'll see some coming up maybe not completely in this video but definitely in the next so let's go ahead and add a window to our project and we'll just go uh, right click on our right click up here on our project we'll go to add down to window and it will bring up our selection and we want to put in a WPF window and in our case we're gonna call this amphibians and the reason that we're going to do that is because we know that in our particular case one of our categories is going to be amphibian so we'll just call the window amphibians and we now know that when we click on the amphibian button we're going to bring up the amphibian window go ahead and uh, say add and at that point it's going to bring us up this new window so we have some similar window structure to do and I'm not going to go through this step by step because we already did this on the main window so for right now 
make this window the same as the main window. We want it to be 1280 by 720. We want it to uh, be able to have uh, the uh, uh, opening in the middle of the page or, uh, or in the middle of the display. So the basic setups that we did, if you haven't watched the videos coming up to this point, then uh, you, you may want to go back because this does take us through and I'm not going to repeat what we just did. So I'm going to pause the video here for just a second and I'm going to set up our amphibians, win excuse me, amphibians window the same way that we did with our main window. Okay, so what I've done now is uh, the basics like we did with the main window. I changed the title and just said Zoo Adventure because if you remember our main window, our name of the overall application is Zoo Adventure. So in here, I just put Zoo Adventure Amphibians. I made it uh, 1280 by 720. I gave it the uh, icon to be up in there, the resize mode I set, and to open up the location and center screen. So if we start it now, our application would come up and we have another window that we can go to that should come up in this exact same place with this exact same size and just switch between the two. So how are we going to do that? We'll go back to our main window and obviously we're going to need some type of control that allows us to move from this window to the other window. So for me, I like to uh, use a label. And why the reason that I'm going to use a label is because I'm going to uh, provide it with a background that has maybe a button image on it, and then I can use the text of a label to lay over the top of uh, uh, of the image. So even though you know you can go with buttons, this is all your type of choice, the what you like to do. But for me, I'm going to do a uh, label to create my button that takes me to the other window. Also, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to uh, enlarge my view and move myself over to the corner because I want my control to be in the right hand corner. So I'm just going to do that and then I'm going to find myself a label and I'm going to slide it right on to my main window. If you notice, immediately you've got the definition of that label that just uh, was applied to our front window that drops down into our grid in our XAML area. And we're going to give this a name because one thing that we have to do is we have to have names now on these items that we're putting in so that we can uh, identify them individually as we go through the, uh, the different uh, controls. So as we start to write code, uh, as we start to write code, we will need to be able to grab it, use it, tell it what to do. So over here in the properties window, it says name, and we're going to name this a uh, a simple, oh, let's say LB Amphibians link. So just to give it a name of some kind that will allow us to identify it uh, when we're writing it. It's a, it's a label, it's for amphibians, and it's going to be our link to that window. So that, that's why I used it. You have, may have some other scheme of things to use. And when you do that, it is now going to add the X name to our definition of that label. The next thing that we want to do with this label is to be able to make a couple uh, actions with it. We're not going to worry right now about the background images and all that. I want you to see how we're going to interconnect with another window. So let's continue on with that path. So over here on the right in our properties we have a little icon here which is going to give us the uh, events of our label and one of those events is going to be a mouse down that's what we're looking for is we want to have a mouse down event so if we put our cursor over here to the right in the little uh, box next to mouse down and double click 
we will now have a mouse down event handler that shows up in our main window code and this is where we're going to write the code that tells it what to do when we click it. Well, we know what we want it to do. We want it to open the window of Amphibian so that we can go over there and operate within that window. The other thing that we want is we also want to make sure that our main window or our, uh, or our current session of this application remains active. We don't want to keep open new sessions because you, it makes it much more difficult to do things. So what do we need to do in order to make that happen? Well, when we click that button, we first want our main window to hide. We know that we want it to hide. So we can say this because we are currently in the main window, this dot hide. This simply is just saying that when we uh, click this button, hide this window. Next, we want to create an instance of our amphibians window. So amphibians and then we'll just put uh, all amphibians win as a uh, and then equals new amphibians now we're going to do something just a little bit different here because one thing we want to do is make this connection between the main window and the amphibians window. So we're going to make a parameter or a, a, a passing item here in the constructor of amphibians and say this. We're going to be passing this. Now unfortunately you can see that this causes somewhat of a little squiggly thing because it doesn't know what it is because in our amphibians code area it doesn't have something that we can pass it doesn't allow us to pass anything in the constructor but what Visual Studio will allow you to do is to create a constructor that includes it so we're gonna just click that and notice that now it's gone away because it is now a valid statement and if we go into our code for amphibians there has now been a constructor that cr was created with the main window as a pass and has created a variable for main window we're going to talk about that a little bit so for right now you should be able to get to this point of where you have created an instance of, of amphibians and you've hidden the main window and you have been able to pass this capability of something from the main window to the amphibians window. What would be the last thing we want to do, of course, would be for our amphibians link here, our amphibians win, we want that to show. So by making it show, we now have completed what our our mouse down event will be we're going to hide the main window we're going to start up a uh, instance of the amphibians window and we want you to now show that window and we've also provided us a way to cross over to that particular window with some type of information last but not least to make this all happen we're going to now go into our amphibians xaml.cs file and we're gonna fix this double constructor item so we know that everything has to be initialized we're going to simply cut and paste into this new constructor that was made and we are going to delete the old constructor from amphibians this should make everything work let's go ahead and run the program and when we go up here and we click on our label sure enough there's our amphibians window when we close that of course though our main window doesn't come back so we still have some more work to do but we're gonna do that in the next video for now just go to debug and say stop debugging to get back out of that make sure your project is saved and I will see you in the next video which will be number five sorry I mean number six because this was number five <laughs> see ya